Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial for Vortex. If you don't know what that is, Vortex can be used to add high resolution detail on top of low resolution fluid simulations. Uh, you can watch the Vortex in one minute video at the top right, and there will be a link in the description for where you can get Vortex. Since the last tutorial, it's been updated, so it now also supports the use of the Flip Fluids add-on, and it comes with a small Vortex Manager add-on of itself, which will automatically set up the materials for you. And I will go over these two additions in this video, so the Flip Fluids and the Vortex Manager add-on. If you want to use Flip Fluids and Vortex together, you need to make sure that you have the right Blender version and add-on version. The Blender version needs to be at least version number 2.93, and to verify if we have the correct Flip Fluid version, we first need to add the domain. We'll start by making this cube the domain. And now under the Flip Fluid surface settings, there should be a checkbox for generate velocity factors. If you don't see this, you will need either a new version of Flip Fluids or an experimental build, which is the case at the point in time while making this video. So make sure this is checked before you bake. And I'll set this second smaller cube to be the fluid inflow object. Also under the flip fluid button. And now bake the simulation. And the nice thing about Vortex is that we only need a relatively low resolution for this. So in the domain, I'm going to turn down the resolution from 65 to 32. As you can see, the result of the bake is still very coarse, so I'll now add more details using Vortex Manager. In the shading tab, you should see after it's installed correctly under the materials tab, there's now a panel with Vortex Manager in it. And I'll use this to add a new material to the domain. You can specify the name, I'll just leave it like this. If you set it to an already existing material, it will overwrite it. And we need to specify the flow source. This is by default mantle flow, which is what Blender uses. But we can now change it to be flip fluids. And I'll disable vortex foam because in my experience, vortex foam looks worse with flip fluids compared to mantle flow. But I will leave suspension enabled, so the water will be slightly murky and darker. And if I now click generate material, then the full shader setup will already be done and most of the default values will be set. The time values will also be animated using drivers. And just for demonstration purposes, you'll see that if I would instead enable Vortex Foam or change the flow source to Manta Flow, that the material set will be different and some of the default values will also be different. But even though the default values are set according to the flow source, you will probably still need to tweak some things. So I'll go over how I usually do that. So I start by using the Node Wrangler add-on and Control shift click to preview the bump height. This is the pattern that the waves will take. And if I use the arrow keys to move through the frames, you will see mostly random patterns. So I'm going to disable wave animation speed, which gives the randomness, just for previewing it. And now it's easier to see the flow of the pattern. And you should see that along with the mesh moving to the right, the pattern also moves to the right. But I want the ripples to be a bit more extreme. And I'm going to do that by increasing the flow distance. You could also increase, for instance, the wave scale which makes the details a lot smaller and more frequent. Let's say 1.5 is good enough for now. And as you can see, the pattern now completely moves along with the flow and forms ripples at the edges, uh, just like Vortex is supposed to. After reintroducing some of the random movements for the wave animation speed and connecting the normal Vortex Water Shader, the shader is now ready for rendering. So you can check out the other tutorial I've made for the full process of rendering, animating, and exporting the video for the scene that you can see on the screen right now. The link will be in the description. 
and that's pretty much all the new additions since last tutorial. I hope this was useful. If you still have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or always use the support feature on Blender Market. Thanks for watching.